Hi, this is Spencer Colgan, and welcome back to my wallpaper and painting show on YouTube. Today, we're hanging a simple Philip Jeffries grass. Uh, grass wall coverings. And it's one of many of their fine products that I've hung in the past for you on my channel, and many products that I've hung that I wasn't able to put on my channel. So join me as I hang this beautiful product and give you some tips and tricks that I've learned over the past failures uh, of hanging this beautiful product. And I'll give you some ideas about how best to install this around inside obtuse angles. Let's get to it. Ninety degree inside corners, up to inside corners, up to inside corner. Greater than ninety, less than one eighty. Almost a ninety degree outside angle. This was the best place to start, and so I have a slight overlap after I push the product into the obtuse angle. Very important that you have enough to finish the wall. You don't want to wind up with this. So when we push it into the obtuse angle, we have a little more than enough, which is far better than having not enough. Even if it's by a little, we make sure that our first sheet is plumb. You can do that by making a graphite marking underneath or alongside your wall covering. Pay attention to light covered wallpaper because you actually might be making a mark that is irremediable. That is, that it shows through your light wall covering, even with, dare I say, thin vinyl. It's happened to me. That's why I share it with you. Okay. Something I've never featured on my channel is the wallpaper smoothing brush. I will concede that with natural products such as grass cloth, you might want to go with a uh, brush smoother. Now this is a synthetic, granted. However, it's not going to scuff our natural product. They make these with horsehair and they're very effective. When you're cutting a thick natural product on an obtuse angle, it's very important that your blades stay consistent with the center of the obtuse angle. You do not want this as you go down. So, what you do is, you take a forgiving object, such as a plastic smoother. Even if you were to overdo it and create a shine here, your shine that would be created by the friction that you make with your smoother and the product, which is not desirable, but it would be canceled out because of the light trapping in the obtuse angle's center. You can see how it's naturally shiny in the center, is it not? Well, that's because the light gets trapped there, okay? It is not from the smoother, but if you were to do that, it would be forgiving. Now, you just wanna Push, push, push in. Just push, making sure your wall covering is hitting the center and that you hear behind your product. That means you're hitting it and that there's no residual rebounding noise, which would indicate air underneath it. Watch this. Let me show you solid. And then this. Very good. Let me try to find air. You hear that? Listen. You hear that differential? We have air there. No air. 
Yeah. You hear it? So you want to make sure that's out. And then you run a 10 inch taping knife down this obtuse angle's center and you begin to cut. So you would take your blade and then you push it in like that, making sure one last time that you've created a vacuum, a pure seal between your wall and your wall covering. And then when you make sure that it's vertically straight, you cut alongside your blade. Always straightening it out right in the center of the angle, pushing in toward that angle, and then proceeding every 10 inches, or however long your guide will be. The reason I use a taping knife is I have a handle to do this, to push in. You could certainly use a guide like a yardstick, okay? And then after you cut it with two hands, you're gonna push with one hand, and with the other, you're going to push in. And this is simultaneous, and I'll show you what I mean. And as I cut through, I, I, I bring my, my taping knife over to the seam, and where it stops is where I make my cut. So that as you can see, I wind up with a very smart, crisp seam. If there's any fixing to do, push it together. Don't do this with flat grass cloth, what I just did. You'll make marks on it, but this, you can beat this over the head with a bat. Don't do that. But you will see that you come up with the most beautiful seam. So, do this. This will ensure that your wall covering looks very much like your flesh before the doctor sews, sews up a cut in your flesh. You're pushing it, you're pushing it, you're pushing it in. And you will barely have a visible cut, okay? And we do, trust me when I tell you, there's a slice here. I've already cut it, now I'm pushing it together. Two hands, because this assures that it will mend together like flesh, mending with stitches. Okay, I'll show you at the bottom what I'm talking about. Rest assured, my product is cut. Okay, but I've mended it together using the procedure I just showed you. And that's how you do it. Now, you'll see that I have a little bit of a overlap. And that's because my corner is not straight on my wall. So I'm going to trim this at the end and I hope I remember to show you how I trim it. Let me just give you a foretaste of what I'm talking about. Make sure that the edge is really tight against the wall. I would suggest that you do it when the product is dry. But just so I don't forget to show you, I'm gonna show you how I do it while it's wet. I make sure that I have at least two inches of shaft to use as a guide against this part of the wall. This will ensure that I'm not cutting my edge off on a 45, which would show a very ugly cut. I want it sharp and flush with the edge of the wall. And so I cut in and then I turn my blade on and then I angle my blade. Look, I'm going, pulling it down at a 45. 
and in short spurts, holding this piece up, I cut away. You see how that's done? And that'll give you a beautiful cut. See that? Now you could imagine if I held it, this would be flush. But what if I did that? Guess what? My edge would look like that angle. Don't let that happen to you. It's very hot in here. The customer asked me something like, is it hot in here or cool? I said, it's hot. So she put the temperature up to 77. I went to the husband and I said, can you uh, make it cooler in here? He said, sure. So the wife said, I thought you said you wanted it hot. I said, why would I say that? I said, it's okay. And here, right after this first sheet, we have our second obtuse angle. Now if I work from the seam toward this corner, wonderful, right? No, I'll pull my seam away. At this point, I need to lift up the material that comes after the obtuse angle so as to remove pressure from the seam. If this is stuck down and I work on my seam, this is too stubborn to move. Therefore, I force my seam to give up its connection. So here's what I want you to do. With my seam in place, I simply lift up on the material and I can feel my seam going into place now. I lift up taking the adhesive and the sticky away from the wall and I push my seam into place. See that? I can feel that. And now I can push it into place without detriment to the connection that I've already secured here. So you wanna lift that up and work on your seam. If you put this down, and this is down, then this will pull on both this and this. So far, so good, right? But now look what we've come to. For the first time in the installation, we don't have an inside corner, but we have an outside corner. And this angle is also greater than 90 and less than 180 degrees. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but trust me when I tell you, it's not a 90. There's a better view of it. So if we butt the next piece up against here and try to wrap it around this outside corner, and bring it to here. What do you think? Does that sound like a good idea? Now remember, each piece is 36 inches. Is there anything wrong with doing that? What I just said, wrap it around this outside corner? Well, there is a problem with it. This corner will exert tension onto the material. It will exert tension onto it because as I move my material into position, this corner will say, well, I want more of it toward me. And this bump or this corner will do its job. And as this constricts a bit, it's gonna move toward this corner, drawing its attention. Now you can sit here all day and play with it and keep the seam joined. You can do that. 
until this corner stops exerting pressure on this seam that will be formed. Here's what it'll do after it's, it's drying, it'll do this. See that? Look again. And you'll come over two hours later, and this is what you'll see in reality. You see that space there? How do we keep it like that? How about we overlap it to here? And we continue hanging the rest of our material for an hour or so and come back to this. After this has done its job on this. And then we just slice it down here. Can we do that? You bet we can. Remember I said to keep in mind that this is 36 inches? What if you get mindless of the fact that it's 36 inches and you say, Spencer said to overlap it. I'll bring it over here. Whoa. 36 inches from here is over here. And you will create a visual ugliness, a disproportionate amount of material. We have to our benefit a breakup of the 36 inch piece right here. This is about 21 inches from here to here. If our piece is 36 inches, then this is about 21. And then as we move over here, this is the full 36. So when somebody walks in here, they're not expecting 36, 36, 36. They have four here. They have 32 here. Then they have less than 20 here. It's not a full 36. So, my point is, if you take an inch and a half of this off, nobody's going to beat you up. Even if this were a flat wall with all 36 inch pieces, I've done it before, nobody's going to beat you up. But if you do this, somebody's going to beat you up. Someone's going to notice. So keep that in mind. Let's get to it. So we put a piece of tape on the edge. Now, because we put it on the edge, we know that this is straight because we know that this is straight. So if our edge of the wall covering is straight, then we know that if we bring the next piece up to here, we're straight. But I don't know if I'm gonna bring it up to there. That's, that's a lot, maybe just half. And in that case, you can draw a straight line down here with a pencil, okay? Because when you risk bringing it all the way over to here, you have glue on it. And then once the glue gets on there, every professional is going to know what you did. You got glue on the grass cloth. So I'm thinking about how I'm going to do it. Stay tuned. So we want to Velcro the next piece. What do I mean? We're going to put glue on the wall and the product so that the result would be like a Velcro. You know, Velcro has two sticky sides. This will help protect the material from doing exactly what I told you. Moving on the corner. You can Velcro every job you do. Except some materials, just some, say, do not Velcro, we will void the warranty. But this is a fine case, in most cases, by the way, where you can Velcro. When this dries up, when that shine dies, this becomes super tacky, and you can feel your fingers hard to pull off, so to speak. And that will keep the product in place. But the trick is you want to 
you want to let it tack up. And so I'm going to proceed to do the rest of my corners. Still waiting for that to tack up. Still wet. So I decided to hang the header. Now, what about this? This brings me the next piece is 36 inches and it'll bring me over here. Can I bring this piece over to the corner? Can I do that? But then I would have this. So should I take the next full sheet and drape it all the way down here and waste this? Should I do that? Or because we have horizontal lines, let's bring it up close to these lines. Does anybody think that I could cut through these? And from far away, you wouldn't notice it. So could I take a piece and just fill in the top and then splice it right there? I'd save all of this waste if I can do it, right? If I hang this sheet all the way down, I've wasted 20 inches by seven feet. Wow, that's a lot of waste. Let's try to splice it. When you're positioning this type of material in the corner, you will see that the corner is not perfectly plumb, evidenced by this dark line here. So here you don't see a dark line, but here you do. Okay, you see these threads here? You know your blinds that cover your windows? You have, say you have a 30 inch spread of blinds, right? You have the cord that goes down the left side and the cord that goes down the right. If you take the blind like this and you do this, you'll see that your, your blinds will zigzag because they're only held together by the cord on the left and the cord on the right. So there's a lot of play in there. You see these cross threads here? You have the line going this way. In between this, this horizontal and this one is a piece of natural plant that was slid into it. Well, it accounts for the wall covering falling into the corner the way it is. It's similar to a hard cover on a textbook. Because of everything I just explained, with these threads here. You're going to have to think of this type of material 
wet blinds. So we're gonna knock it out of plumb. We're going to have to use the material to our advantage. Since it'll zigzag, we can get it to fit in this area because we can push this section a little in while this, this part stays a little out. And watch what I'm talking about. Keep your eye on the corner. See that? If you just let the wall covering tell you where it's going to fall, telling you, well, I'm a hard cover book, you're gonna have gaps. You have to fill in those gaps by using the weakness of the material to your advantage. So where it goes in, you make sure that you push it in to fill in those dark lines. See, because if I go straight down and I don't do it, look what I have there. If you're a newcomer, don't say, well, that's, this is natural, that's the way it happens. Yeah, but watch this. Better? Oh, yes. Move that wall covering in. And get rid of your black lines. Then, take a smoother and push that edge into place so that you no longer have a black line, but you have what appears to be a perfect 90 degree angle of uninterrupted grass cloth. All the while, we know we have it interrupted because we cut it. This piece is the second half of this piece. So I was going to cut it at 18 inches on the table. And I said, no, nah, I'll bring it to the wall. Follow the straightness of this corner, please. Oh, you see that? In the middle of your screen, you'll see that we have to do the best we can. In the dead center of your screen, you'll see that comes out, right? That's all right. So corners and grass cloth are no joke. You have to make sure that if you're gonna cut this piece, you wanna measure from this seam all the way, you wanna measure a couple of places. Up there, here, above the middle, at the middle, below the middle, to see what's my longest point. What is it? 18 and a half, 18 and a quarter. Because if you were going to cut it, you would cut it a half an inch beyond your greatest length. Since we see that the wall corner does this a little bit, well, this makes up for a different measurement at different points, right? Second point. We all know, as, as installers, how difficult this is. With paper, easy peasy. With grass cloth, if you think that you're going to put this into place without holding this down, you're mistaken. Let me show you something. Let's try to push the corner in. Wow. My seam in the corner is separating. Let me push it back. Okay. So, you might be tempted to do this. I'll just run my smoother up and down here, nice and easily. Well, guess what? That's not gonna give you a nice flat corner. Okay, because it's very strong stuff. 
Let me show you what you gotta do. Okay. You wanna put some stress relieving cuts in there. And for those of you who think that I cut the woodwork, I didn't. Okay, you get a sense of, I mean, you can use a scissor for this, right? You just go in there. But you get a sense of what kind of pressure is needed to get through this. And look, I didn't even fully penetrate it, right? So you get in there and you make your cuts. And then, see, I already did it off camera. And then look how much easier this goes in without affecting that. Okay? See? Now I can do this. The, the whole goal is not to undo your corner seam. And by the way, always cut your corners here. Gotta do that. Okay? And now we can proceed with cutting it. No. Nice and sharp corner. What do you think? By the way. Get yourself a rubber seam roller. Now, grass cloth instructions will normally tell you, do not use a seam roller. I'm going to tell you why. When the softer grass material joins at the seams, it's so thin that any pressure on here will make the glue ooze out. But I'll tell you why. There's a way to avoid it. They're just giving you those instructions. For those of us who put too much glue, if you Velcro the wall, meaning if you put paste on the wall and paste on the product, but you leave your corners with a minimal amount, guess what you can do five minutes after you put it up? Now, we're not talking about this kind. No, this kind handles seam rolling very well. In fact, you need it. Let's look up close. Let's look at the seam here. Now I've already rolled this one, but this was riding above. It was, it was standing proud, as they say in carpentry, when it stands up and above. Just check it out. Look how nice and tight it makes that seam. Right? Now check out that seam. Look here. Nice, right? How do you like that seam? And that's the best you're going to get it. At least the material is flush. You see, when you're dealing with this material, you can see these fibers, some come up this way, 
up to the top of your screen, and some are below the level of the adjoining grass cloth. And so you, you go, this is why your seam is noticeable. Because where it meets the other, you have sometimes a high on one side and a low on the other. And sometimes you don't have a differential. I'll give you an example. Look at the dead center of your screen. You have two pieces of grass cloth that are exactly flush. But look just above it. You have a high and a low, right there in the middle of your screen. So to avoid, to make it your best seam, roll it, don't kill it. You'll see the difference as you go along. This was the other Philip Jeffries product I installed in the customer's home within the last year. It's shimmering and it's not something you want to put over texture, which is what the customer insisted upon. So if you look close, right, you can see the texture underneath it. If you look at that corner, you, you'll see. A slight bow in it. That's all right, though. You know what it is. With grass cloth, you see any imperfections on inside corners because the material is horizontally perfectly straight, right? And so you can see that some of those straws are longer than others, right? You can see that. But that's all right. That's all right, look in the middle of your screen, the curvature. But that's what we professionals see. Other people may not see. Looking good. We still have that. That's nice and tacky now. It's ready to go. And I'm almost done. Let's review what we've done. My my engineering was interrupted by a better idea as I went along. Engineering is the process by which you determine where all of your seams are going to land. That's basically what engineering a layout means. Check this out. We're coming to our end. Now watch this. Let me share something with you that would make perfect sense to you. If you have a seam right here on this area, that looks bad. Bad. It throws off symmetry in the mind of a human being. This is better because you have this edge and your eyes and your mind are more inclined to be less distracted with a seam here because this ends here. Still not perfect. What is my distance here from here to here? It's 40 inches. This is 20 right there. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start here and go this way. That's 20 inches. And I'm gonna bring this piece all the way over here, which is about 30 inches. You like that plan? I like it because this whole angular issue going on here, this angle and that angle, you're not gonna notice that I used a 30 inch piece of wallpaper. And guess what? We're gonna do the same thing right there. As you can see, it's worked out very nicely. In the center of our duct, we have a seam. In the dead center of the central piece of the, the ductwork. And of course, we'll just put those two inch pieces, cut out from a separate sheet, 
and we'll splice them between the top of this and this piece here, probably right there. All we have now is this one piece here and this one piece here. And that would complete our beautiful Philip Jeffries grass wall covering installation. Well, that completes our installation of the Philip Jeffries grass wool covering. I hope that I explained in detail those issues that were necessary to explain. The rest is cookbook. You glue the product, you put it up on the wall, you try to move as quickly as possible, and you spend the time where you have to spend the time. To the right of that header there, is our horizontal splice. With this material, you can do horizontal splices, as I've demonstrated in this video. But don't get cocky about it. Don't put it four feet from the floor or eye level. You want to be smart about it. And if possible, you don't want a, a full 36-inch wide splice, if you can help it. You can splice this in, in little areas between that vertical trim there that you see there and the corner two inches away from it. Sure, splice away. But once you start splicing a 36 inch piece, like right there, that long piece, what happens is, is that those, those pieces that are in there, they're not perfectly straight. So if you decide to come across and cut with your level, you're going to be cross-cutting those natural plants that are inserted into those threads. So just be mindful of that if you decide to splice. If it's behind a piece of furniture, by all means, go ahead and do your splice. I hope you like the video.